forced out of her job last month after a misleading video was posted on the internet. Former federal employee Shirley Sherrod returned to the Agriculture Department this week for a meeting with Secretary Tom Vilsack. The outcome of the meeting was surprising, though, as Sherrod turned down offers to go back to work at the department. Shirley Sherrod sat down with me after that meeting. Tell me a little bit about today. What was that like to come face to face with your former boss, Secretary Vilsack, today? The second day when he said, I stand by my decision, that hurt. So I just needed to have some closure, I guess, and hearing exactly what happened. And he did explain what happened that day he was traveling. Um, he explained that they made a lot of mistakes dealing with me and um, they had they're trying to correct those in the department they putting new things in place so that that won't happen to others so if what happened to me will keep others from having to go through that hopefully in the future then i guess that's a good thing you said before though that they were changing the process but you didn't be you didn't want to be the one to test it right it sounds like you don't have a lot of faith in the agriculture department changing when it comes to racism or discrimination? If the secretary was the only person I had to deal with as we move forward, then it probably would be fairly easy. I think he he's very sincere about um, dealing with the issue of racism in the agency. But if, like I said, if he was the only one to deal with it, it probably wouldn't be an issue right now. But um, that's that has been going on. Racism in this agency has been going on for more years than, I, than, than, than I've been in this world. Um, it's systemic, and, um, you, know, it, 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 you know, so I would deal more. I would deal with more than just Secretary Vilsack. Is there a deep culture of racism inside of the department? Yes. Only, only, only the agriculture department? It's not just the agriculture department. I've run into others as I traveled through airports and I remember the first week when I was on my way home and in the Atlanta airport and young women young African-American women who work in other agencies CDC one of them and she talked about what she's dealing with it was the same same kind of thing you know so it's not just the Department of Agriculture it's the one we know about the most but there are issues with minorities um, in other agencies of the government. Some people look at the mosque issue and they think maybe Muslims are being targeted. Maybe they're the group now that's being discriminated against and people think it's acceptable. Um, let's just say a lot of discrimination goes on in this country. Um, it amazes me how people can think sometimes and that's why I say to that's why I try to say to everyone I try to treat people like I want to be treated and then in case someone doesn't want to be treated right treat them like you want your children to be treated and I think we would all be okay if we look at every situation like that my whole thing is how can we figure out in this space that we have in this United States of America there's enough space here for all of us. We can, we should be able to work it out. What do you think of President Obama's job in dealing with race relations? You know, the poor president, they, he can't speak out about anything unless they're jumping all over him. I, I really do feel, you know, and I know he's in a position, he's the first black president, um, and people look at that. Um, I do think whether it's from him or some other way with his administration, we do have to talk about race. We need to talk about race in this country so that we can move beyond um, where we are now, because we're not in a good place. Your life has been turned upside down, I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Since all of this uh, began, what, what has been the biggest change for you? You know, um, and I love people. So it's not a bad thing to be able to go out and you think you're not being recognized and people come up to you and they just want to hug you or take a picture with you. Um, I haven't been that kind of public person, 
but, um, but I'm a people person. You've been invited to speak before a lot of groups, obviously about civil rights and race relations. What is the message? What, what do you want to tell them? What do you want them to learn from this? My message hasn't, hasn't changed in 24 years. It's so interesting that now everybody's aware of it. But, you know, my, I, I've tried to use my life. I've tried to use what happened to me and how I've, tra I've been transformed. I've been able to see that it's not a black-white issue. It's a poor issue. And that as, as poor people coming together to work on our issues together, we can make a change. I would say that I said it back when at that, that speech for the NAACP, I would still say it today. We can get beyond this. What's next for you? Well, uh, I certainly want to get back to many of the letters and cards and email messages and, you know, the Facebook stuff is, is something new. You know, I'm trying to, I, I haven't even dealt with all of that. There's so many there. I need to try to get back to, to people who, who try to reach out to me. So that's one thing. I'd also like to look at uh, finding those communities, those individuals who are seriously working on the problems of race and try to highlight some of those. I think we need to, to, to really look at the good out there and put those examples out there so others can see. I'd like to promote that. Do you think that there is some fear for people to talk about issues of race? Dr. Laura, who resigned over the use of the N-word, for example, and she says she's not able to speak her mind, that there's a, a silencing or a political correctness that's going on. How do, how do you see this? I didn't see or hear what she had to say. Um, I've heard others comment about it. I think it's the way she did it. Um, but uh, she would have to answer to that. I think if this country makes it a priority that we're going to deal with race, we're going to talk about it, and we'll get beyond this, I think we can do it, you know. I think we can get to a better place with this. Why should we want to keep this going on and on from generation, one generation after another? It doesn't even make for a safe place for us to be in this country. If, we're, if I'm afraid of white people or I'm afraid of Hispanic people or Native Americans, you know, it keeps us fighting each other.